Okay, so we've acquired some infrared data, some really nice infrared data. Now we want to evaluate it, right? Now, some of you in your projects may be doing more evaluation of IR data or other spectral data. So this is something you're going to run into again and again. You want to find peak positions. Let me show you how you can do this in a nice way with Igor. All right, so we've got this really nice data. We have some impurities. We've got the HCL region. Let's concentrate on that. All right, so we expand that region. Yeah, the box across there, expand that. And now we want to find out where all these peaks are. How are we going to do that? Well, one way you could do that is to show info and you get the cursors. And you could place a cursor on top of a peak. You can just drag and drop it. You can move it around with the arrow keys too and you can go, oh, there's the top. But down here, it only shows you to the tenths place. And we'd like to know more where that is. Well, you can find the data point. I had you do that and chase after things. But let me show you how I would do it, right? What we really want to do, right, is we've got a nice peak here. Okay. We've got a great peak there. And what we would like to do is find out where the central position is. Now, we took a data point. Is that actually the central position of the peak? It might not be. Why not? Well, because there's a real line shape to this. Oh, wait a second. If there's a real line shape, why don't we fit a proper line shape to it? Okay, so we put one cursor on one side, one cursor on the other side. Now, we don't want to go too far because there's a second peak there, right? We want to not have this second peak influence the first peak. So we want to get over there, right, away from that one. We can go out further on this side, that's fine, because there's no interference out here. And then we could do curve fitting, right? You gotta pick the right function. Oh, it's uh, T7 is the transmittance data and wave number seven is the appropriate wave number wave. We're not gonna do a line though, we can do, well, let's say a Lorentzian right? But we don't want to fit the whole spectrum. No, nope. we're fitting between the cursors. All right. Not setting anything. We don't need the box here, right? We just want to fit the Lorentzian between the cursors. Great. Let's do that. Bam. Hey, doesn't look too bad. We got a peak position, but you know what? That doesn't necessarily fit the wings all that well. Well, we can choose something else. For instance, we could choose a Gaussian instead. That's another card. Gaussian and Lorentzian, two of the ones that we chose between the same positions. Hey, that's looking a little bit better, right? Uh, actually, it's not too far different if you look, all right? 2902, 2902, 2906.2, I should say. 2906.2 in both cases. Right. So that doesn't. But, you know, to really make this look good, there's a mixed vote profile. That's actually how you pronounce it. Boom. Oh, look at that. That's a beauty. There we go. And was it really a better fit? Well, if you look down here, its chi-squared value is 0.4 compared to a chi-squared value of 7 for the Gaussian and a chi-squared value of 22 for the Lorentzian. So the Lorentzian wasn't too bad. The Gaussian was better. The float profile is even better. All right, now I've got a number. Oh, I've still only got tenths places there. How can I get the, but look, it's good out to the hundreds. The accuracy of the fit was out, not to the hundreds, to the thousands place. How can I get that thousands place, right? Well, the way I can do that is just a little bit of programming. Let me show you the programming that you need to extract this value, right? We did a fit. The fit gave us this coefficient wave, W underscore coef. That's the coefficient wave. And these are the coefficients down here expressed as, um, as what they are in the fit. And it's that X zero, the central wave number. That's what we're after. So this central wave number ends up being zero, one, two. It's W underscore coef element two. That's the one we're after. All right. So what I do is I open up the procedure window and I write a little macro. A macro always starts with macro and a name. 
and then if we have to enter a variable, we put the variable in between parentheses. It always ends with the statement end macro. So I always put those in first, okay? We're gonna use a variable j, I'm gonna call it jj here, to make sure j is defined as something in eagle, right? And I had to declare that variable, all right? And then what I wanna do is this curve fitting operation. Do I remember how to write that? No, I don't remember how to write that code, but I go up here to analysis curve fitting. I pick the float profile. I pick the right in trans percent T wave. I pick the right wave number wave. I say I wanna fit it between the cursors, right? And now I say to clip and it'll put that command in the clipboard. And so if I go back, to the programming page, when I paste, it gives me the right command. Now you'll notice that I also added this slash Q here. The slash Q is for quiet. That means it won't print the results of the fit down here. I don't need them. Why? I don't need them. It's just gonna fill up space, get rid of that. Instead, I'm going to enter W underscore coF2 that's the central wave number. And I'm gonna enter that in a wave I call the R branch because I have one macro for all of the wave numbers from the R branch. And I write exactly the same one for the P branch, but I just put the values in a separate wave. Okay, so what do I have to do? I have to identify the peaks. How do I do that? I go scale back out and I say, oh, wait a second. Let me select the R branch there's the R branch. Oh yeah, this is the first peak, the R branch. The first peak in the R branch is for J equals zero. I've got those in the right place. So let me just choose that macro I wrote for the R branch. I put in zero, say continue or hit return. Boom, it does the fit. And you'll notice it puts an, uh, a number up there, out there to three decimal places because I've formatted this to be a decimal number with three decimal places. Then I want to move over to the next one. Oh, wait a second. I can just use the, the keys, right? I can just click on the graph and use the keys and move the cursors. Both of them will move. I'm using the arrow keys, right? And I'll just move along. And when I get to the place I want to be, whoops, went too far. Okay, that looks good. Let's fit that one. Notice that there's no number here right now. And I'm going to go back here, and this is the R branch that we're looking at. It's J equals one, right? Because this was the zero transition, zero to one. Here, this is J equals one to J equals two in the upper state. I put in J equals one there. Hit continue and watch. It will fill out the number, bam, right there, three decimal places. I get all of them. And I do that for all of the R branch, all of the P branch, right? At some point, we're gonna get out here, right? I'm gonna to have to re-expand this and get out to these ones. They get pretty small, right? We're gonna place the cursors on either side here. We'll just count out and make sure we get it right. There's not one, not one bam, two, and even. I believe this is a peak too, right? Because we can look at how far apart they are. And yes, that one falls into the right pattern again. So we can get all of those and this is what I've done here, okay? Now, we need to analyze, we need to analyze um, these data. What are we gonna do? Again, you can analyze them in Igor. Now, I've done that in a separate file. And let me show you that. All right, now that file, right? So we've got all the data from the R branch and the P branch copied and pasted them over here, right? And then I need to write another little macro, right? It starts off with the name. It ends with end macro. I've got to declare some variable. I'm not going to enter any variables in this one, it turns out. I've got to declare some variables that I need for all of my calculations, right? Now, we need to calculate those two combination differences. And the combination differences, that first one is really easy. It's just the wave number of the R branch for a value of J minus the wave number of the P branch for the same value of J. 
right? In Igor, you can put in a P, that's for the element for point number. And so it'll just subtract those two waves from each other, each point number the same. Now, for the second combination difference, I needed the J minus one minus the J plus one of the R branch minus the B branch, right? And I could figure out, you could do that in a loop and do it like really compact and, and neat kind of um, coding if you want it. But let's just do it the brute force way, right? When we do the combination differences, there are two of them that aren't going to have a number associated with them because you don't have all the values to make those. All right, so we've got to call that NAN, not a number. And then we won't use that in any calculations. But all the other ones, right, I've just put in directly by hand. And you know, you can copy and paste these things. So you do the first one, and then you just copy and paste, and then you correct the element number that you need, right? Because we always have for a given value of J, we have to have the J minus one wave number of the R branch and subtract from that the J plus one, right? From it from the P branch. And so these are always going to differ by an element of number of two. Right. So we just stick all of those in there. We're going to do curve fitting to the data. These are the combination differences. Of course, when we do the curve fitting, now it's going to be a linear curve fit to something like the first combination difference versus J plus a half. And there, now we have to hold the intercept to zero, right? So that's where we hold the intercept to zero. Remember that one. Boom, we do it. And look at that. We get these beautiful, beautiful fits for the vehicles zero and vehicles one data, right? So these are really quite nice. So that's how I would have done it and implement a bit of Igor in there. That peak picking uh, function, right? That is quite nice for finding out those and then you don't have to do it all by hand. So that's what I would suggest for you.